You ever killed a man before? What do you think, Junior? You think these hands been soaking in ivory liquid? <laughs> What's up, ladies and germs? Your boy, Adam Pecora here. And you've tuned in to another episode of Requiem for a Tuesday. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, as you may be able to tell from that intro there or the title you read when you clicked it, we're talking a little Hitman today. Was it the best? Wait and see. No, it wasn't. But was it good? Wait and see. Rate, review, and subscribe to Requiem for a Tuesday. Apple, Spotify, the main two, but wherever you listen, odds are we're there. If you're listening now, that would probably confirm that or not. Uh... <laughs> We're on YouTube. There's merch, arfat.bigcartel.com. Uh, my Instagram is adam.arfat if you are so inclined. And uh, I do music with my boy Justice, frequent guest of the show, who has his own show, Microwave Minutes, that comes out sometimes. Uh, check it all out. Check the links in the description below. You can get to all of the wonderful things I just mentioned and yeah go go listen to all that stuff but first of all you know pat yourself on the back for being one of the lucky many few are fatting it up today appreciate you why don't, why don't you help why don't you help these numbers grow and spread the word everybody loves to fucking blabber about everything they like all the time including me that's the whole point of the show you know so include this in your blab treat me like a real real star you haven't heard of this guy why haven't you heard of this guy this guy's crazy whatever you know that's that's how people talk to people Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> we're talking Hitman today. The newest Richard Link later a film. If you are not familiar with one Richard Linklater, it's like I just ate a bug right there. I don't know how that happened. My tongue. It's like when you try to speak fast. No problem. But if you want to do impact, slow speech, you better have the balls. And I don't have them. So anyway. Richard Linklater, an icon of independent American cinema. Still haven't seen Slacker, by the way. I'll get to it eventually, I'm sure. Or, you know, maybe not. Whatever. Um, famously followed up by one dazed and confused. Probably still his best movie. I mean, it's a fucking all timer. So I guess, you know, I shouldn't throw shade by wording it up. Oh, probably still his best movie. I mean, what's he supposed to do? Just do another one of those, which he did, by the way. Second topic of the show. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Richard Linklater also made, you know, many acclaimed films over time. Boyhood, if you're not familiar, the Before Trilogy, haven't seen a one of those either. Pretty behind on my Linklater. Uh, I gotta admit it, here on the episode, I can't act like a big fan. Haven't seen one of those three movies. I have seen Boyhood, it's great. I have seen a scanner darkly, uh, you know, cool to do the rotoscoping thing. Not that great of a movie, let's be honest, but that's fine. Fun experiment. What else? School of Rock, who hasn't? I mean, you know, no offense, but like anybody probably could have done that one. Doesn't have like a distinct feeling to it. Uh, what else do we got? What's another Linklater Hall of Famer? Ah, yes. How could I forget the Bad News Bears remake? Um, I didn't like that movie because I just felt like they were making Billy Bob Thornton do 
Bad Santa again. Um, never seen the original, so I don't know how it compares, but apparently it's not as good. Uh, and then there's Bernie, the Jack Black movie in which he murders an old lady, but everybody loves him. Uh, and then there's some other ones in between me and Orson Welles, you know, like, eh, is that supposed to be any good? I don't think so. Oh, great reviews. Never mind. What can I say? I don't know. Uh, he made that um, recent animated movie for Netflix. Um, which is more rotoscoping stuff, but it's like a kid's movie this time. Apollo 10 and a half. And I literally didn't know that this came out until Hitman came out. And then I looked up, like I'm doing right now, the Linklater filmography. And it's like, wait, what is this? I didn't even know that this happened. And apparently it's good. And uh, apparently I should have, you know, maybe watched one more movie for this episode. And I could have let you know, but whatever. That's fine. Uh, for those unfamiliar with the rotoscoping thing that I'm talking about, so for Waking Life, which I haven't seen, and the aforementioned A Scanner Darkly, I remember seeing this on At The Movies as a kid. Shout out Roger Ebert. Yeah, and Siskel, I know, but he was dead. He died pretty early on for me, okay? So technically, I'm an Ebert and Roper kind of guy, but I digress. It's essentially a process in which they, like, film the whole fucking movie, and then somebody just has to go through and trace that bitch. So, double production time. Yeah, I don't know how anyone has ever authorized him to do that. But, hey, you know, these aren't, like, fucking $500 million movies, so I guess it works out somehow. Um, you know, maybe I'll watch this Apollo movie and report back, but maybe I probably will not. Anyway, let's get to Hitman, Richard Linklater, regardless, a storied filmmaker. And we're talking Hitman, the new Glenn Powell flick, who, by the way, love this guy. The guy just oozes charisma. Now, I didn't watch the surprise hit Anyone But You because I could give a fuck about a romantic comedy. If you know me, you know me. Um, but I was in on this one, you know, Linklater and Glenn Powell's charisma. Obviously, he was great in Top Gun Maverick, who was not, by the way. What a banger. And look, interesting plot to this one, interesting tone to this one. And I don't really know how I feel about it. It's like the parts of it that are just a comedy are good. And the parts that are not, I think, are not. Maybe after my initial viewing. Uh, so let's break it down, I guess. Glenn Powell plays a professor in New Orleans for some university, possibly community college. I don't recall. Being a big dork nerd, I think, is the reason they give. He moonlights doing, like, audio work for undercover police investigations. He's the guy in the van with the headphones on running audio. Uh, recording the mics, listening in, making sure the feed is good, tech stuff. Um, probably a role that I could technically fulfill just by simply recording this episode. I don't know, though. But I could get some wireless mics on the low. I know where to look. Honestly, it'd be you don't even need to wire anybody anymore. I don't even really understand that, frankly. 
Can't you just have someone like put their voice memo on with their phone in their pocket? Like, do you really need to literally wire someone up? Like, legally speaking, you know what I'm saying? Like, does the law require that you have to gather the recording on your own police device? And if so, can you not just have a police-issued iPhone have the voice memo app recording the whole time? Can't you, like, just have the guy be on the phone with, like, an AirPod in his pocket that's picking up the whole thing and you're just recording the phone call? It just seems like there's a million tech solutions. And here's the thing. There's nothing in this movie where there's like an at stakes moment where he has the wire on. I mean, there technically is at the end of the movie. Um, but in a different way, I'll get there. But a sen- it's not the same argument that I'm trying to make where it would be thwarted um, by doing this. But I'm just speaking generally here. Seems like we've out technologied the need for somebody to wear a wire. But, hey, what do I know? Just the audio guy here. So anyway, he's some nerd. Yeah, he does that, moonlighting, whatever, and then basically because he, well, he does this specifically for the unit of police that send fake hitmen to answer inquiries for hitmen, then get the people to say it on audio clearly and then arrest them. Little sting operation. It's like, okay, that's that's interesting. It seems like There probably wouldn't be that many cases where this would even be a regular thing. But there are a lot of people out there, I suppose, so you never really know. And I'll skip ahead a little. It there are there's some reason why. Well, I mean, there's no the reason why. The guy he usually is working with, the cop guy who pretends he's the assassin that is wired up, that guy's like a piece of shit and gets suspended effectively. Um, and the cops basically just go, "Hey, you're the you're the guy who listens to him the most. Do you understand the ins and outs of everything he says in there?" So you're the most qualified to be the next guy. So just get on in there and go do that, Uh, which is crazy. He's literally not a cop. So like technically, I feel like the things wouldn't matter. Anyway, they're not taking this too seriously. The whole tone of this um, throughout the beginning of the movie is like a complete like slapstick broad comedy. And that's kind of what I touched on earlier at the beginning. This movie is kind of like half a Fairly Brothers movie and like half a Coen Brothers movie and uh, those don't mix together that great but it kind of works but it's very weird and it's just weird. It's a noticeable tonal shift that kind of plays off all right but it's like I'm fully aware of it, but I'm still on board because I think Glenn Powell's just that damn good. But anyway, so the way it starts off, once he takes over for the guy, uh, it they just kind of do like bits and he shows up kind of getting into different characters every time and they just do like little bits. He meets some sad guy who wants to kill his wife. And as a different character, and then that's funny for reasons. And then he meets some lady who wants to kill, like, some guy who shit on her dog or whatever. Whatever the case may be, he just meets various people that want to kill various people while in various characters. And those all lead to various comedies. And that's basically your whole ramp up, your first third. That's your fucking... Act one that gets you set up for what's about to fucking really simmer into the movie. 
So next up, he meets this lady who wants to kill her husband basically for real reasons. Like, he's a monster, and he beats her, and she's miserable and afraid and whatever. And so, you know, he's basically like, yeah, how about you just, like, leave your husband and don't look back? And instead of spending money to kill the guy, just go go do something else. Get your hair cut, whatever. Like, Jesus, lady. And then the cops are like, what the fuck, bro? We're supposed to nail these people. And it's like, I guess he is technically doing, like, the morally correct thing. Like, seeking arrests is weird now there's like a preface at the beginning of the movie that's like hitmen aren't real every time you think you're hiring a hitman it will always be a cop sting thing like what i do so if that's the world that the movie is set in they would know that she's not going to go like find some other hitman so problem solved but whatever whatever anyway So this leads to a whole thing where he basically wants to nail the chick. And (laughs) that's pretty much it. And so he's like, I'll just keep pretending to be this hitman so I can get some fucking pussy. Wouldn't that be fucking awesome? And it's like, oh, well, that's kind of fucking weird and risky for a bunch of reasons. And he tries to hide that he's banging this chick. But not very well. I mean, he just doesn't tell anybody. And then is constantly seen with her all over town by her husband and by his co-worker. And they're all like, yo, what the fuck? And he's like, nope, nope, nope. I'm on top of it. And so the lies just get more and more convoluted until eventually the husband's like, I'm going to fucking kill you, guy. And her... Actually, first, when the husband runs into her, he has to pull a gun, pretending he's still a hitman. Which, why does he have a gun? I think technically still from being in character, but it's like, again... You know, it's all played for comedy, but then it's like played for serious when there's real danger moments like this. So, like, normally for comedy, I go like, oh, well, it's a comedy, so are we supposed to, like, believe this? Not really, it's just like, oh, we're just gonna move through the plot to get through the jokes but whenever there's like like when he is talking to the woman about these it's played very seriously for drama because she is like very seriously abused and whatever and so when they run into the husband it's like a very serious like violent action-y moment where he's like yo i'm gonna fuck you up like there's no it's all drama there's no play for comedy here and so he just pulls a gun on the dude And it's like, yeah, she thinks he's the assassin still, but it's like this. What is this guy doing? And essentially he's falling as he falls for her. He falls more and more into the character and basically kind of becomes this guy. And yeah, I suppose at this point of the movie, this is just kind of who the assassin is instead of him trying out a bunch of different assassin characters. So maybe he is a little more used to it, but he's like still teaching on the side. It's all just very like, I don't know, man. How do you have the time for this? Anyway, (laughs) like, I don't want to cook dinner after work. I just don't understand how you could possibly go this deep into some like weird underworld backwards character story just to get some pussy, whatever. Uh, Some people are more diligent than others. So then it becomes the guy after seeing that his now ex-wife has a new man. Tries to hire a hitman to kill his wife. Ends up, you know, with the same guy. He sees that it's him and is like, oh, fuck, what? And then runs out of the place. The hitman, who also works for the cops, 
now knows this and tells the girl and she's like, how the fuck do you know all this? And he's just like, I'm good, you know, whatever. Uh, he lives in this mystery hitman life, so he can just claim that he knows all this stuff. That's somewhat feasible. And then she just goes, I fucking killed the guy instead. Well, they find the body. Anyway, the point is, the parts that are supposed to be like very dramatic... It's just weird that they don't show any of this happen, and now all of a sudden, he's like trying to help her cover up the murder, even though he revealed the truth to her. It gets very complicated at the end, if you can't tell. So he, re- she's like, I killed him, and he's like, wait, what the fuck? And she's basically like, yeah, I learned how to kill people like from you. You tell me all the ways to like get away with it and stuff. And he's like, I'm not a real fucking hitman. You're f- what the fuck? That's crazy. But then that turns into him being like, well, okay, <laughs> see, this is what I'm saying. His coworker that wants his job back is like trying to blackmail him because he knows he's dating her, but they effectively broke up because he was lying to her the whole time. But then when the cops are like, we think she did it, let's pin it on her. They're like, all right, mic yourself up, Glenn Powell, and get in there and convince her. But they don't know that she's dating her. So anyway, he covers her ass with like a notes app thing because they're just on mic and is like telling her what to say correctly. It's a very good scene that's played well and they play off each other good and whatever. Although it's not very convincing to me, but, you know, on mic without knowing what's going on, I could see how you would think that. But it's like, why is he covering her if she just killed this guy? Like, even if that guy is a piece of shit and it's like, you're just some teacher and but like, you're cool with that. Just again, like, just because you guys were fucking and that was fun. Very odd. And then that leads to the reveal that like she's been poisoning the other cop who's like there interrogating her already. Or no, he comes in later. That's what it is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So they divert the attention of the police successfully and it's like okay that's weird that you would do that for her because y'all broke up and she hates you because you're a liar and you found out she killed somebody so it seems like you should part ways and maybe i could see how you would do that as like a last ditch thing to be like look i got your back get the fuck out of town now that you killed that guy go away like this is nuts no he goes back there later that night the other cop is already there and interrogating her and then she reveals she's been fucking poisoning the guy and then he ties a fucking bag around the cop's head and he's like let's fucking hide his body too the way you we got the other murder off the trail now nobody thinks you killed your husband so we'll just think this guy's a druggy loser we'll fucking kill him too and that's the end of the movie then they're like they got married and had kids and everything went great and it's like, whoa, what? They start fucking while the dude's still like, run, like his last breath's happening with the bag around his head. It wasn't funny. It's played weird. And it's weird. And I'm not saying I have a problem with it being weird. I have Only in the sense that the tone is off. And it's like, oh, this is a rom-com. They do label it a black comedy. But it's not a black comedy like literally until then. And... Like, Bernie is the closest Linklater movie to this, but it's weird. That's all I have to say. It's fucking weird. And Glenn Powell is very charming and witty and awesome. And the movie's pretty well done, and there's some great jokes and some good bits, and that's all awesome. Uh, But the tonal shift for me is just too strange, and, uh, you know, I'd maybe watch this again. But, uh... That part of it just really doesn't work and I didn't I don't like the ending or it just should have been played more broadly, I think. Cuz it's just too uneven. And that that's really all I can say. But uh what a wild ride. Um and then just as an honorable mention thing here, I don't really have too much to add on to this, but the movie Everybody Wants Some, also Richard Linklater Also, Glenn Powell, very early Glenn Powell. I believe this was 2016. Uh, This movie is the spiritual sequel to 
Dazed and Confused, and it could literally be the sequel. It's the first day of college for a freshman in Texas who's a baseball player, and it's like the three days before classes start where you move in and just like get to know people and whatever. And much like Dazed and Confused, you're just fucking hanging out, having a good time with a bunch of people, and it's a hangout, and that's really all that it is. And it could have literally been a sequel to Days and Confused. Like, had they just named the main character the same guy from Days and Confused, like the picture that it follows. Like, he's se- he seems like the same type of guy. Um, it's set four years later. Like, he was a freshman then. He could be a freshman again. Obviously, he'd be a different actor. It's way later. Um, I-, I-, I see why you don't want to, like, even mess with the the legacy but at the same time it wouldn't really because it's an all new set of characters anyway whatever you don't want to mess with it you don't want to mess with it i get it but the movie complete hidden gem i mean it bombed at the box office it doesn't really seem like it's had enough of a cult following like dazed has or did now dazed is certified classic of course um glenn powell is electric the whole time he's in here and essentially the dude you know, gets to class, the baseball guys get their own house, they get into, you know, just a bunch of clash of personalities, a lot of parties, you're in college, uh, you're baseball, a lot of fucking uh, initiation, whatever, hazing type things. But whatever conflicts they get into are very minor, quick conflicts, and they're all breezed over and done with a smile because it's college and having fun and every time is great and it's the best years of your life and yada 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 and whatever and you know Richard Linklater basically just had the greatest time in the world growing up like all these things are autobiographical stories for him he basically is just like yeah we just hung out made a lot of friends like did a lot of drugs like got a lot of pussy like just had an easy breezy fucking awesome time like this is what i remember what it was like yeah we played baseball we fucking saw tits went to concerts like it was awesome it's like yeah that is pretty awesome richard linklater seems like you had the greatest life of all time leading into you becoming a hollywood director so you're great um now obviously anyone looks back fondly on anything you know it could all seem fucking awesome so whatever but this movie to where dazed has the like ah you know we're trying not to get bullied we're trying to you know avoid this i'm trying not to fuck something up with the girl or whatever there's literally like none of that all of this is easy breezy everyone's just having such a good time um there is like a romance element in the middle he keeps like linking up with this girl briefly and is just trying to find the right moment with her and whatever but it's just like three days of hanging out, having a blast. Uh, it's as good of a time as you can have watching a movie. I believe this was streaming on Amazon Prime. So, I mean, if you remotely like Dazed and Confused, this movie's just, it's set like a few years later with people that are a few years older. And instead of having the like small town angst, they have the college town confidence and disposition of like look man i this is my whole thing we run this place like i'm enjoying this to the fullest just an absolute blast there's some great characters some great it's all very similar to days and confused like it truly does feel like a part of your childhood is in there, part of your experience is in there. You can definitely relate to some of the things that are going on in here. Um, like the dude who smokes weed that's way older saying crazy shit and your your mind is blown because you're all high, whatever. And then you find out the dude's like kind of technically a total loser, whatever. And you're just like, oh, no shit, whatever, man. That was fun, good times. You know, like just the best. So everybody wants some. Go check that one out. A great double feature with this or Dazed on its own. Uh, That's all I got. Let's get the fuck out of here. Tune in next week. Please share the episodes. Get the word out. Tell your friends. Share the episode. Share the episode. Share the episode. Rate, review, subscribe. 
Uh, merch, rfat.pigcartel.com. You know the gist. Uh, check out all the links in the description below. I appreciate everybody for listening. Let's get these numbies up, baby. It's a big summer. Coming soon. <laughs> and remember, I are fat. You are fat. We are a fat. Calculator.